Let's begin now in chapter one, fundamentals of testing. Like we said, chapter one consists of six sections and section number one is why is testing necessary? Why do we need testing? Most people have had an experience with software that didn't work as expected. Most of us tried a software or worked with a software for a long time and then it crashed or had a bug in it. But what does this crash or bug cause in the software? The software that doesn't work correctly like we expect it to work or behave, it may cause loss of money, time or business reputation for the company that made the software. It also could cause injury or death especially if this is a hardware system if it is for example an embedded system that we will put in a car or a medical device in a hospital this could cause injury or death if there is a failure or bug in this software so we are talking about error mistake fault bug failure what is the difference between these words when the developer works on software if he does a mistake in his code okay if he does a function in an incorrect way what the developer does in this situation is called an error or a mistake okay so the developer makes an error or a mistake this error or this mistake causes a defect bug or fault in the software so when we talk about defect bug or fault we are talking about the same thing that is what the software tester detects when he performs software testing if the tester doesn't find this defect or bug or fault this could cause failure in operation okay the user tries software and it fails when he uses it does all errors or mistakes cause defects in the software maybe but not all the time the developer may make an error or mistake but I don't detect it, okay? And it doesn't cause failure in operation. So why do bugs or defects appear in the software? There are many reasons for this problem. The first of them is complex code, okay? So you may be working on a complex code. You are a good developer, you do your job in a good way, but the code you are working on is complex. The second reason, human beings are fallible we all make mistakes okay so there is a possibility that that software developer makes mistakes maybe we are working on a complex infrastructure maybe there is time pressure we have to deliver the software next week so the developer is under pressure and he makes a lot of mistakes maybe there is changing technologies we are used to use a technology and then this technology or this programming language or this platform is changed so the possibility of making mistakes is increased. Maybe our system has many interactions. All of these are internal causes of defects, but defects or failures can be caused by environmental conditions like radiation, magnetism, electronic fields, or pollution. You may use your GPS on your mobile phone and then you go in a tunnel and the GPS is not working. This is not a bug you caused, okay? This is an environmental condition. Now let's talk about the relationship between testing and quality. Like we said, the developer may make an error or mistake and I detect the defect that is caused by this error or mistake. When I handle this defect to the developer, he will fix these defects. So what I do as a tester is measuring the quality. The tester measures the quality, he doesn't increase it, okay? So who increases quality? The actions that the developer makes in software after the detection of bugs, this increases quality. Testing also gives confidence in the quality of the software. If I am a tester and I tested the software and I found few or no defects, this gives me confidence in my software. This gives the stakeholders confidence in the software and they can deliver it now and they are happy with it. So like we said, quality increases when the defects are fixed. We should integrate testing as one of quality assurance activities. Testing is like quality control, okay? So he cares about the quality of the product, but quality assurance is about the process, the whole process that the product goes through to be developed. So testing is part of quality assurance, but it is not all the activities in quality assurance. So when we perform testing, how do we say that this is enough testing? How can we be satisfied with the amount of testing that is done? The answer to this question depends on two things, the level of risk, and there are many types of risks, like technical risk, safety risk, is it safe to release this software or not? And business risks, are there competitors in the market that we have to release our product before then or not? The second factor that affects my decision about releasing software is 
project constraints how much time do i have how much money what is my budget if the time and budget are hosted and finished i have to release i don't have another choice testing also provides sufficient information to stakeholders okay so they can decide are we ready to release the software or not